Being a professional angler, I spend a lot of time trailering my boat down the road. You know, we cover tens of thousands of miles, honestly, in a year with the boat on the trailer going down the highway. So we do that tons and tons, probably 25, 30,000 miles a year just pulling this thing down the road. So there's a few things that I've learned over the years that make that, for one, safer, make it more convenient, and to really help take care of your equipment. You know, as an as a angler of any kind, as a professional, I depend on this rig to do my job. Day in and day out, everything on it has to perform. Every time I get to the lake and put it in the water, I need everything on it to work to be able to compete against the competition I'm fishing against. If you're a weekend guy, man, you've got two days off this weekend, and you're gonna go fish in one of them, you want your stuff to work when you get to the lake too. So it's important that you take care of your investment, you know, that you've made in that in that boat. So a few other things, we just got loaded up. The first thing that I'm gonna do, I've got my Atlas jack plate, I've got it raised up, the lake I was almost shallow out here today. So I wanna lower that, you know, I'm gonna have it down. I don't have to have it all the way bottomed out, but I want it lower than half. It's about an inch or so up right now, maybe an inch and a half. That's good enough. If you want to leave it, you know, at two, two and a half, no more than three, that's okay. Especially if you know you've got maybe backing into your driveway as an uphill turn or something like that where that motor may drag. Leave yourself just a little bit of clearance. But as a general rule of thumb, you want to lower that jack plate down to less than half for the bulk of your trailer. And if you've got a real long trip, then lower that thing all the way down. That's going to help take off some stress on that transom. Let's move back here and I'm going to walk you through everything else. You know, the obvious, the easy one is, uh, is putting your straps on back here on the back. You know, that's something that, that it only takes a couple seconds on all of our boats anymore. It's having those ratchet straps right here. Lock that down good and tight. Make sure you give it a good pull. Make sure that's nice and tight. Like I said, I've already lowered that jack plate down. It's pretty low. One thing I always like to do, I, I start on one side and I work my way around and I make sure I'm completely done when I get to the other side. I don't leave anything undone. Nothing else to do on, on this, on the port side, or on the starboard side of this boat. Straps on, there's no trim switch here, there's nothing else to do at this point. Coming around the back of the motor, I just wanna give a quick look at my prop. You know, this one, it's been, it's been used some. It's got a few little skip marks in it. You know me, I'm always somewhere pretty shallow. But just look at your prop, give it a good spin. Make sure you don't see any fishing line up here wrapped around the hub or anything that you need to pull out. Um, you know, everything there looks good. So now around here on the starboard side, I've got a lot to do over here, okay? One thing that's nice on our, on our nitros now, and a lot of boats have, is the drain plug that is remote. So all I have to do now is turn that switch, my plug's out. You don't have to bend back down underneath of there to, uh, to take that plug out. Next step, I'm gonna take these steer stops and click them on right here. One on that side, one on that side. What those do, when you're trailing down the highway, that's gonna keep your motor straight. It's only got just a little bit of wiggle room. You say, well, I don't, you know, I don't care if my motor's turned one side or the other. You know, if you're not going a, a great distance, it's probably not a big deal. But trailing like, like I will for four, six, eight, 10, 12 hours at a time, it's really important for me to keep those on there because if that motor starts shifting one way or the other, and then just bounce it down the road, that hydraulic cylinder is only gonna take so much pressure before you end up blowing the seals out on it. So having those steer stops on there, it only allows that motor to shift just a little bit one side or the other. And you know, it keeps your motor straight going down the road. It probably wouldn't make a big difference in your fuel mileage in the truck, but every little bit helps, you know? So just make sure as, as long as that takes, the five seconds it takes to put those on is, uh, if, is five seconds well spent. Next up would be whatever type of, of transom saver you know that you want to use. I'm going to raise my raise my motor up here, and that goes on just like that. Turn it up a little bit more, and there, that's nice and solid. You need something to lock that motor down into place. Now you've got really two options. You've got this style, which is something that really just helps you know on the on the engine, really helps protect the engine, or you've got the long style that goes all the way to the trailer. Kind of the difference there, in my opinion, the long one that goes to the trailer really helps protect the transom, but it puts a lot of vibration. Any vibration from the trailer, it's putting that into your engine. The motor support style doesn't really do much for the transom other than keeping the motor stationary, um, but it really helps eliminate a lot of vibration into the motor from anywhere else. So that's the kind I run. I've run those for years now. I've not had any issue with it. Um, our boats are really, you know, really built to take that. And that's something that I think as fishermen, we think of 
you know, hitting waves on the water being rough on our transom. Man, trailering this thing down the road is way harder on the transom than being out in three and four foot waves and taking a pounding from those. So um, yeah, that's, that's just one little tip. Make sure you've got some type of good motor support. Final thing over here is to put this other strap on, on this side, pull it up there, a couple clicks, make sure it's good and tight. Plug is out. We're done back here at the back. Um, you know, if I wasn't talking myself through that, just working through that, I'm done back here in 90 seconds, maybe. Something like that, it doesn't, doesn't take very long. And then one thing, if I didn't winch it, uh, didn't hook the front up when I actually pulled up out of the water, now's the time to make sure to do that. Go ahead and click that eye there. And then on our nitros, we actually have a secondary safety strap. Always a good idea to put that one on there. If it's there, you might as well use it. So um, that's it. And you know, for trailering like I do, that's the way I trailer tens of thousands of miles every single year. That, add my Dalco cover to it, I'm ready to go down the road, you know, for a, a long day in the truck. 